Okay, in this segment, I will focus on fully developed laminar flow. There are maybe multiple approaches that I can take. The first one may be taking from F is equal to MA, so basically into the second law, applying the fluidic particle and see what happens. But the approach that I'm going to take in this particular segment is going to be from the dimensional analysis, okay, pi terms. So we have covered this in the earlier videos, okay? So if I look at this from dimensional analysis, what you will obtain is my pressure change for a pipe with a diameter of d will be a function of the velocity that I have, the length of the pipe, the diameter of the pipe and the viscosity of the flow within that. Okay. One thing I would like to highlight is the density is not present here, right? You may have noticed. This is actually an interesting fact. In a laminar flow, density doesn't play significant impact. Okay. The viscosity plays an impact. However, next in the next few segments, I will focus on the fully developed turbulent flow, and at that point, you will see that there will be density in here and there will be surface roughness as we will discuss in the upcoming module. Okay? So if apply the pi terminology in here. What you will remember is I have this k is equal to 5. So I have 5 parameters which are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? And r will be equal to 3 as well. Okay? So I will not be going over the step-by-step -step analysis. I have several videos that you can revisit this. This is definitely on the easy end of the spectrum as opposed to what we have solved. So I will actually simply go ahead and write the answer in here. If I do the dimensional analysis from here, I will get myself d delta p divided by viscosity times velocity will be a function of the pi 2, which is L over d. Okay, so basically this will be pi 1. And this will be my pi 2. And you note that there's k is 5, r is equal to 3, so I get myself 2 pi terms. And when you do the analysis, this is what you're going to get. Obviously, I picked this particular set of repeating variables in here, okay? And I picked d, viscous and velocity as my repeating variables, and this is what I get. The next step is to do experiments. And in the experiments, basically, I make, I need to obtain this one, the pi 1, which is d, delta p, viscosity times velocity, is a function of L over d, okay? So if I go ahead and do this experiment for a circular pipe, okay, just a regular constant diameter pipe, what I will obtain is I will obtain actually a straight line, okay? I will actually obtain a straight line, and the slope of that will be 32, okay? It's going to be d delta p over viscosity times velocity will be c, some kind of a co constant times L over D, right? And if I do this, what you do obtain is you get this to be 32 for a pipe. Obviously, circular pipe. Okay? And you can also obtain the C value for many different geometries. Let's say that I, might, I have myself a rectangle, right? This may be a fairly common application for air conditioning ducts, right? We have air conditioning ducts that is. Um, rectangular so there's a function of a over b you can obtain let's say that this my a over b is 0 0.1 as an example in this particular case this will be 84.7 so these are all tabulated and it's available to us okay the c values available to us basically if i have concentric cylinders as a function of d1 and d2 i also tabulated this i have d1 over d2 let's say that my d1 over d2 is equal to 0 0.1 just to be consistent with the rectangle, I'll get myself 89. Okay, after we obtain this, then what I'm going to do is I want to look at the volumetric flow rate because this is very commonly used. And as you know, as I have this d delta p over viscosity times velocity is equal to 32 times L over d for a circular pipe. And then I can just get v over here from this equation. My v will be delta p times d, another d, d square, divided by 32 viscosity times L. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this V over here. I'll, I'll simply go ahead and plug over here. Okay? 
And if I do that, what I will see is my Q will be delta P times D squared divided by or do viscosity times L times area. What is the cross-sectional area of a pipe? It's gonna be pi d squared over 4 because I'm using d to be consistent, right? And from here I obtain my q as pi d to the power of 4 because I have a 2 over here, I have another 2 over that comes pi to the power of 4 delta p divided by 128 because 32 multiplied by 4 is 128, viscosity times L. So this is a very commonly used formula for laminar flow in pipes. If I'm interested in finding out what my volumetric flow rate is, or all the things that I need to know is I need to know the diameter, I need to know my delta P, this, this information will be obtained from my pump that I select, I need to know my viscosity and I want to know the length of the pipe that I have. With this information I will be able to use my Q value. Okay, one more thing that I want to talk about in this segment is related to V really wanting to non-dimensionalize parameters in fluid mechanics. Okay, One of a common non-dimensional number is delta P over one half rho V square. Okay, So if you go ahead and try this you will see that this is non-dimensional. Okay? Obviously, I, I have one half, it's just by convenience over here, okay? So, what I want to do is, I want to actually, when I go up over here, you can see that this is how we are rep represented. The pi 1 is equal to 32 times pi 2. And I pulled off V over here. And I actually did a similar approach here where I got myself delta P. You can see from here, if I have 32, which goes the L, V divided by D squared, right? So I, I want to simply insert it over here and you will see it will this will make much more sense when I cover the turbulent flow as well okay and from here you will see that I'm gonna get 32 times viscosity times L times V divided by D square and divided by one half rho V square now I want to write this in a specific way okay so I can write here 64 so basically 32 divided by one half is 32 times 2 which is 64 okay Next, what I want to write here is I want to write this way, viscosity rho v d. Now, let's see what else is left in here. Okay, so 32 is fine. Density I have used over here. Look at the velocities. I have a v down up here and v squared down here. So one of these will cancel. I'll get v and that I have accounted for that. So that's gone. Let's look at the diameter square. I, I inserted one of them, so it becomes d viscosity I accounted for. So the only two terms that I left over here is L over d. So I'm simply rearranging this equation for my own preference. Okay? And you may remember or may not, but this parenthesis has a special name. In fact, actually the inverse of this parenthesis has a special name. What is rho v d over nu? That is the Reynolds number, so this becomes 1 over Reynolds number. So if I write this, you will see that this becomes, um, and let's write this th this way, delta P will be equal to 64 over Reynolds, right, times L over D times rho V squared over 2. Okay, and this 64 over Reynolds has a name as well. This is called F. Darcy friction factor. Darcy friction factor. Okay, 64 over Reynolds. I want to highlight that in the next segment we will cover the turbulent flow. And you will see that I will obtain this, I will obtain this, I will obtain that, and I will have a different F. It will be a little bit more complicated than what I'm looking at. One thing I notice in the students is that they do make mistakes when I am giving them a turbulent flow, they do use laminar thrust friction factor. It's not quite right, okay? I want to highlight that this is much easier, and I want to write here, F is equal to 64 over Reynolds for laminar only. I want to even underline only as well, so that we understand this. Again, in the next segment, this will tile much better with the turbulent flow.